Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. In this video, we will look at the fasted state or post-absorptive phase. So what happens a few hours after we have eaten, when all the glucose and the fats have been stored away? Well, first of all, what we have to know is that in the fasted state, the body will try to maintain uh, blood glucose levels, uh, which is normally about four to six millimolar, millimoles a liter. It's important to maintain this blood glucose level uh, in this range so that there is enough glucose supplying our brains and other tissues that need it. So in this video, we will look at the fasted state. The main organ that we will focus on is the liver. Here is the bloodstream. And other organs that we will talk about in this video are skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, the brain, as well as the heart. Now during the fasted state, the pancreas will release an important hormone called glucagon, which will essentially have the opposite effects of insulin. The secretion of glucagon is stimulated um, when the pancreas detects a decrease in blood glucose levels. Okay, so glucagon is the main hormone in the fasted state. Let's just concentrate on the liver now. During the fasted state, the glycogen will be broken down by the liver to glucose. This glucose can then be released into the blood to increase blood glucose levels. The glucose can then continue supplying the body tissues and organs. So here we have many glucose um, uh, secreted into the blood uh, through glycogen breakdown in the liver. Now this glucose will be used up by the tissues, in particular the brain. In the brain, glucose will form ATP essentially um, and carbon dioxide as waste. Gluconeogenesis can also occur, will also occur during the fasted state, where the liver where the liver's proteins are broken down to amino acids, the amino acids can then be converted to keto acids that will enter gluconeogenesis to create more glucose. A byproduct of this uh, reaction uh, is ammonia, which will be converted to urea. During the fasted state, in order for the liver to keep up with the, with, with the demand of glucose by the body, the adipose tissues will begin to break down its triglyceride stores. It will, it will break down triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol. So here the triglyceride is being broken down to glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerol will enter the liver and enter gluconeogenesis to create more glucose. The fatty acids can be utilized by the heart because the heart's main source of energy comes from fatty acids. Now, skeletal muscles has its own glycogen stores, and so during the fasted state, it can break it down to, to form glucose units, providing the muscle with energy it needs. But of course, its glycogen stores uh, will be depleted after a while, and so the skeletal muscle then will begin using the free fatty acids that come from adipose tissues as a source of energy. The decrease in blood glucose and the increase in fatty acids in the blood during the early fasted state is an important concept to understand. Here is a graph with the plasma concentration on the y-axis and on the x-axis there is the number of days of fasting. So two days fasting, four days fasting, six days of fasting without any food. So let's look at the plasma, the blood concentration of glucose during fasting. Plasma glucose is usually stable, but after days of fasting, the blood glucose levels will drop. 
And the body will, as I mentioned, uh, break down glycogen and perform gluconeogenesis in order to keep the blood glucose uh, levels up. But at the same time, the free fatty acids level will increase slightly during uh, the days of fasting because the triglycerides are being broken down by adipose tissue. The triglycerides are being broken down to free fatty acids. But the free fatty acids level will not pass the glucose levels in the plasma. So we begin to have a lot of free fatty acids than usual in the blood. What else will happen to these free fatty acids besides supplying the heart and the muscle? Well, the free fatty acids from the adipose tissue can enter the liver. The fatty acids will be oxidized, a process known as beta oxidation, to produce many acetyl-CoA's. There are many acetyl-CoA's produced from fatty acid oxidation. And you might, have, and you might remember acetyl-CoA. Well, in prolonged fasted state during starvation, there is so much acetyl-CoA that it cannot enter the Krebs cycle like it normally would. There are two reasons for this. First is that there are just too, there is just that there's too much acetyl-CoA's and the liver must convert this acetyl-CoA into something else. And the second reason is that the substrates within the Krebs cycle, such as oxaloacetate, are already used um, as energy uh, to feed gluconeogenesis. And so the Krebs cycle is essentially stuffed up. It's not working properly in the liver. Okay, so acetyl-CoA has to be converted to something else then because there's just so much of it. Well, it cannot be converted to uh, pyruvate and then to glucose. There's no such enzyme. Instead, the acetyl-CoA will participate in ketogenesis, which is the synthesis of ketone bodies. So what are ketone bodies? Well, they are essentially molecules with a ketone group on them. And these ketone bodies can be used as a source of energy during prolonged fasting. There are three main types of ketone bodies produced by the liver during fasting. These are acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is the main uh, ketone body produced. Anyways, the ketone body levels in the blood will therefore increase during uh, fasting when the body is not eating anything and the body is trying to find other means of energy. Ketone bodies can actually be used by the brain uh, for energy. Ketone bodies in the brain will be converted to acetyl-CoA and then the acetyl-CoA will enter the Krebs cycle to produce ATP, energy and carbon dioxide as waste. It's interesting to know that the brain always uses glucose as their main source of energy under normal circumstances. But after we fast for two days without eating anything, there will be not enough glucose. And so 70% of the brain's energy will come from uh, glucose that has been broken down from glycogen and from uh, the fats. And actually 30% will come directly from ketone bodies. During prolonged fasting, the heart will also begin using ketone bodies, which again will convert to acetyl-CoA and then enter the Krebs cycle to produce ATP and carbon dioxide as waste. So this increase in ketone body in blood is extremely important to understand because if we go back to the graph that we drew earlier, after about two days of fasting, ketone body levels in the blood will significantly increase. Ketone body levels will be greater than the glucose, uh, blood glucose levels after a week or within a week. So if we go to the brain example, after weeks of fasting, starvation, the brain's energy now, 70%, will come from ketone bodies and only 30% will come from glucose. A massive difference and massive change. After weeks of starvation, the proteins in muscle will also begin to break down 
in order to compensate for the decrease in blood glucose. The protein in muscle will be broken down to amino acids that will enter the blood. But we have to understand that the muscle proteins is, are the last to be broken down as a source of energy because the body still needs muscle to function. We still need to move and we still need to breathe. The amino acids from muscle protein breakdown will go to the liver and uh, will participate in gluconeogenesis to make more glucose. Ammonia from amino acids will be converted to urea in the liver. Urea will enter circulation and urea will, will be secreted or excreted out from the kidneys. Talking about the kidneys, the kidneys is actually another source of gluconeogenesis during prolonged fasting, during prolonged starvation. Actually, after weeks, the kidneys will be the main source um, of, gluco of where gluconeogenesis occurs because the liver just cannot keep up with the glucose demand by the rest of the body. Okay, now let's look at the hormone glucagon and see what effects it has uh, in this whole fasting process. Well, glucagon, which is secreted by the pancreas, will uh, stimulate glycogen breakdown. Glucagon will also promote gluconeogenesis. Glucagon will promote the release of glucose into the blood from the liver. Glucagon will also promote lipo lipolysis, which is the breakdown of triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol. So glucagon has the opposite effects of insulin, essentially. So just recapping, what we see in the fasted state is glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, ketogenesis, and lastly, protein breakdown, protein degradation. Hope you enjoyed this video on the fasted state. Thank you for watching.